somebody who, you know, has a degree, works in construction, owns a, a dancing salsa studio for 20 plus years. Yeah. Where did, uh, uh, are you just an average beer drinker? Like, where, where did that <laughs> even come from? Like, how, how, how does that work? Like, like how do you transition <laughs> to something that, it, again, it's so far-fetched to me. And yes, here you were ballsy enough to tackle it and say, I'm going to start a brewing company. Absolutely. So first, we have to go back to the 1970s, OK? Both of my grandmothers were beer drinkers and they would drink the ponies. I don't know if you remember the ponies of Miller Highlight, the champagne of beer. There are these little glass bottles and my grandmothers would indulge on occasion in their little ponies of Miller. So growing up as a, as a child, there was beer that I saw my grand women drinking. And of course, when you, we became of age, they would let me sip on the, you know, the ponies of Miller. And I just, my palate just got a liking to the taste of beer, which was unusual because a lot of, you know, you get older and you're going, I'm going out with my girls and drinking sex on the beaches. You know, they got a glass of wine. I'm like, yeah, I'll take a cold one. Yes, you can cross <laughs> my glass. I'm Yeah, I'll take the beer. So give me a brew. So I was always the female in the group who just loved beer and but it, it was because of my grandmothers seeing them um but Sean I would tell you back in the 70s I my grandmothers would play music in the house they would have Marvin Gaye playing and Etta James I mean and it was just literally on the weekends it was you know like it was like a party so it was always music connected and I connected it with the beer and so life just kind of my grandmother Nana God rest her soul. And I'm paying homage to my two my, my two grandmothers. She always said, Elisa, find your rhythm in life, whatever it is. So that's coming from my my my, my grandmas. But let's so so moving forward, yes, Sean, I love my brew, but I was in Cape Cod one weekend. I'm gonna tell you exactly where I have my aha moment. I was in Cape Cod at a beer festival, and I noticed a couple of things there were not a lot of women. There were not a lot of people of co color. As a matter of fact, I think myself and the cigar guy from New Jersey were the only, uh, and his wife were the only three black folks in this beer festival. With that said, I was going around to all the booths. Nothing reminded me of my grandmother's. Not one beer in there just reminded me of a classic lager, the champagne of, you know, beers. And so I'm standing there going, okay, there's not a lot of women. And if they were there, they were being dragged around by their boyfriends or husbands. And they were just like, ah, oh, we're here. We really don't like the beer, but we're coming to support them. And then I noticed, you know, no people of really of color at this beer festival. And Sean, on the way home, my uh, boyfriend at the time, now husband said to me, he said, why are you so quiet? And I said, I'm going to make my own beer. And he <laughs> I love it. I love and it. He looked at me and he said, now in the midst of, you know, the, the salsa and, you know, that's booming. He said, and I, he, he said, and I know you are. And Sean, I will tell you, I came home that next day it was a weekend. I came home on a Monday. And I researched the beer industry. And as soon as I heard that it was the beer industry was a hundred and fourteen billion dollar industry, and that people of color and women were getting less than point zero 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 five percent of that industry, and I probably left out of zero. Sean, it did it wasn't about yeah, I was going to make a really good beer. But it was it, it was bigger than that at that point, because I knew that an industry that's making that much and we're not a piece of that. And we can my thing is, if I consume it, I'm going to own it. There you go. I'm not consuming anything else. I, I mean, I consume stuff, but we should be owning things that we consume. So I researched the beer industry for not for three months, not for six months, for three and a half years before I made a drop 
of beer that went into my cans because I needed to know everything about the business. I'm getting into a white male dominated field as a black female. And I was not going to let any stone be unturned. I was going to know everything about the beverage industry as a whole. And that's where the connection lied. Coming from that, that Cape Cod Beer Festival, seeing what I saw and diving in to that. And I felt my grandmother's energy just channel through me as I did the research. And they said, keep going. You have a voice now, Elisa, that we didn't have back in the 70s. You have a voice. You can make a difference. And Sean, that's where, that's where this whole, this is where the journey began for okay. me. What year, what year was it that you went to Cape Cod and made the decision? And what year was it that you actually produced your first can? So 2014, the beer festival, 2014. I didn't produce, I didn't, the, the, my first canning was in 2018 in March. Okay, so you really <laughs> did spend three years, three plus years researching and doing all of the background things that most people wanna jump out the window. You did everything you could do to make sure that your foundation- Absolutely. Your of the, it was solid. If I'm solid. gonna out here, it is going to be with it a strong foundation. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.